Coming up in the stack, we learn how to train your cat, a look into the life of Jeffy, and we get a review on El Camino. All that and more coming to you on Short Stack. Hello everyone, I'm your host Jonah Bowen and welcome to this edition of Short Stack. Short Stack is our inside review into the thoughts and passions of our contributors. Everyone needs exercise once in a while, even animals. That's why this next video is on how to train your cat. No cats were harmed or mistreated in the making of this video. Please, never cruelly punish or hit your animal while trying to train. First, we are going to attempt the kettlebell swing. It primarily works the thighs and the core. Next, we are going to do lateral raises. These are meant to strengthen your deltoids. Now we are going to perform some cardio. Cardio is meant to strengthen your heart and your lungs. You're being a very bad cat. Now when I put you down, you're gonna stay, all right? Yes? You're gonna be a good cat, and we're gonna train together, okay? We're gonna get swole. We are going to get swole, okay? I'm gonna put you down, and you're gonna get swole, all right? If your cat is being difficult, a stern timeout will surely do the trick. But in reality, your cat doesn't want to do much other than sitting on the couch and watching TV with you. I know in the end we would all rather watch TV than run a mile. Am I right? I know I certainly would. Thank you, Jenna Polson, for this skit. The moon is a beautiful addition to the night sky. It's one of the first things we notice, especially when it's full. Let's take a look at our next video called Moon by Aiden Henderson. What beautiful shots. Who knew what our cameras could do? Up next, we take a look at how one of our students makes her tea. Don't go far. We'll be right back. So, I just moved in with this family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore.
I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. This is Jonah Bowen. Now, tea is by far one of the most controversial drinks. Many love it, many don't. Here is how Emma Patterson makes her tea. You can never go wrong with an old-fashioned teapot. You know, I may just have to make a pot myself when I get home. Now, you may remember the plans for our El Camino review from last show. So here is Matt Travoso with his spoiler-free review on the new movie. El Camino. The highly anticipated follow-up film to Breaking Bad hit Netflix and select theaters on October 11th. As you may already know, Breaking Bad is regarded as one of the greatest TV shows ever, scoring a 9.5 on IMDb and nearing the top of many publications' best shows ever lists, such as Hollywood Reporter and Rolling Stone. It is also the most awarded television show ever, with 139 wins out of 229 nominations, including 16 Primetime Emmys, two Golden Globes, and three Screenwriters Actors Guilds Awards. Now, some fans were skeptical of the idea of bringing Breaking Bad to the big screen with the worry that it could tarnish the show's legacy. So, did El Camino live up to the hype? While the now legendary finale of Breaking Bad served as a swan song for Walter White, it left fans wondering what happened to his partner, Jesse Pinkman. When the first trailer for this movie dropped, it was apparent that El Camino would be chronicling Jesse Pinkman's life in a post-Breaking Bad world. Although this movie is more of an epilogue, or an extended 63rd episode, El Camino is a perfect extension to the Breaking Bad universe, giving fans the closure they desired for Jesse Pinkman. With a runtime of about two hours, El Camino picks up right where Breaking Bad left off, following Jesse after the gut-wrenching final scene of its finale. The film is intentionally filled with pieces of nostalgia, bringing back old characters, visiting old locations, and even going as far as mirroring some shots from the series. Another interesting thing the writers did was include scenes that happened during the Breaking Bad timeline that were never shown during the show. Even though El Camino may be slow at some points, the writers made this movie extremely enticing and hard to look away from. They also strike some emotional chords, making viewers sympathize with Jesse Pinkman and what he's been through. Actor Aaron Paul played an amazing lead role in the movie, despite being a supporting actor for Bryan Cranston in the original series. Of course, El Camino has some beautiful shots in cinematography, living up to the standards set by Breaking Bad. While not breaking any new ground, and despite being somewhat predictable at points, El Camino is most definitely a great movie and extension onto the Breaking Bad universe. General reception to the movie has been pretty positive, standing at a 7.5 out of 10 on IMDb, a 90% on Rotten Tomatoes, and a 72% on Metacritic. It may not have been amazing, but El Camino gave the fans the closure they've desired for years and ultimately was a great service to fans who wanted anything more they could get from Breaking Bad. The film reached an estimated 25 million households worldwide in the first week through Netflix streams and 6.5 million viewers in theaters. While we cut to commercial, get ready for a treat from Jeffrey Hall. We'll be right back.
Because of you, I felt hopeless. Because you said rude things about my work, I started to question my own voice. I know it was a joke, but it still hurt me. Because of your negative comments online, I've almost quit doing the one thing that makes me happiest in life. Because you shared something about me that was private, I felt embarrassed. Because you said hi to me on the first day of school, I felt included and I knew that I was going to be okay. Because of you sharing your story with me, I feel comfortable sharing my own. Because you were there when I was coming out, you helped me regain my confidence. I'm still here today because of you. Ninety-one percent of plastic isn't recycled. It takes 500 years for the average size plastic bottle to fully decompose. Nine billion tons of litter is dumped into the world's ocean each year. Change starts with you. Pick up after yourself. Greetings and salutations, and welcome to Student Insight, where we get a look into the talents and skills of students at Ward Valley High School. I'm your host, Jeffrey David Hall, and today on Student Insight, we decided to feature one of our local Warwick Meister singers, Anthony Savino. Anthony, how are you doing this fabulous morning? I'm great, Jeff. How are you? I'm doing well, and uh, we were going to ask you about Meisters yeah. today to see like what you think of it in general. So, my first question would be, what are the Meister Singers? The Meister Singers are an honor choir. Um, yeah, that's... An honor choir? So you get like an honors credit for, from this uh, class? It, yes. It is a class. It is weighted. It? It's weighted. It's a class. We have it, I want to say two. Two out of the eight days, we're all together. And then I think another two out of the eight days, we're in lessons. Is it the only honors uh, choir in our school? Technically, yes. But there is Trebles Choir, but it's not an honors credit. Oh, it's not? <laughs> I didn't know that. Wow, no, it that's isn't. interesting. <laughs> so what do, you, what do you do in Meisters? Like what exactly is it consist of? Um, well, we rehearse music. We learn music theory in our lesson groups. Mm -hmm. uh, we perform. We have three concerts throughout the year. We have a winter concert, uh, a pops concert, which is like pop music, and then we have our spring concert. Okay. Yeah. Does, it, does it benefit the community at all? Is there any community oh, events? Yes, 110%. Mm -hmm. We perform at Pennings. Um, for, we, we sing Christmas songs there. We perform at multiple tree lightings. Uh, I want to say in Greenwood Lake, we have the Warwick tree lighting, uh, we do Christmas tea parties, princess tea parties, all of that that's fun really, stuff. That's really cool, and that's like, that starts like when? Like uh, early December, late yeah, November? November 29th. Oh, interesting. Is that in town? Yeah, right in front of the white church in the middle of town. Mm -hmm. That's And I, I heard through the grapevine. I don't know if this is true. <laughs> I heard that Meisters is performing at Radio City Music Hall later yes. this month. Yes, Meisters is performing at Radio City Music Hall. We are opening for the Christmas Spectacular. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah. You see, I'm playing an act right now. You see, Anthony's a Meister singer, but uh, so am I. <laughs> and I figured that uh, maybe uh, we could do a little ditty yeah, I th right I think now. So, yeah. so I guess we'll sing a little bit of uh, I Want to Be Like You. Sure. I guess I'll start it. So uh, let's go. Uh, Five, six, seven, eight. But I'm a da 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 Yes. Uh, that was actually, uh, what, was that a Disney song? Yeah, that's I Want to Be Like You, which is our Meister signature song. Oh, yeah. Always. Everyone knows it. And where do we <laughs> perform stuff like that? Oh, we do that at the spring concert, um, at our Disney concerts. Not concerts. Our Disney t um, tea parties. Mm -hmm. We'll and sing that to like elementary school and middle school kids. Have we done stuff like that in the past, like all the tea parties and uh, stuff like that? Yes, we have. Oh, that's very interesting. And what consists of like a Meister's tea party? Oh, well, the Disney ones, I, I love the Disney ones. Um, all of the Meisters will dress up as different, well, most of them, will dress up in different costumes. I'm always Aladdin. <laughs> um, and we go out and we just sing Disney songs while children and their parents drink tea and 
just do their thing. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say your, your favorite part of Meisters is? Would it be the Disney stuff, or is it more the other things? I love the Disney stuff, but I would say the, um, the community of people I really enjoy. The community of people? Have you met some like great friends in Meisters? Oh yeah, totally, totally, totally. Would you say it's like one of your favorite classes? Yeah, 110%. Definitely. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you there. <laughs> It's, uh, and who's the teacher of Meisters again? Oh, Noreen Hansen. She's phenomenal. Mm. I love her. She, uh, know, she knows what she's doing. What year did you get into Meisters? Mm, my sophomore year. So I've been in it sophomore, junior, and senior. And how did you, was it an audition or is it just like an open class? Yeah, so you have to audition to get in. Um, and they make you sight read and they want to make sure you can, um, she wants to make sure you can um, pick up music fast. Mm -hmm. And sight reading. Um, you got into music, obviously you're talented. And I also read in the newspaper, you, in, uh, in, uh, New York State Jazz All-State yeah, Choir. Yeah, Jeff, choir? I read in the newspaper that you got into All-State for Mixed Choir. Oh, I'm doing the interview here, buddy, <laughs> come on. So you're in uh, the, the Jazz All-State course. Yeah. Interesting. Was how was, uh, what was, really quickly, what was the process to get into that? Ooh, um, so during lessons, Miss Hanson would take us into the, um, like her office and we would practice and for that we have to um, scat, sight read on a blue scale, and then um, sing our jazz piece. Mm, that's awesome. I mean, I also auditioned. You got in though. Yeah. It's amazing <laughs> you got in. It's a small chorus too, like 26 people yeah, or I something think so, like yeah. that. That's awesome. I'm really happy for you. Thank you. And you've obviously gotten recognition for that newspaper as I mentioned. Yes. It's the, awesome. The school district is putting it everywhere. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Well, I think that's going to do it. Uh, well, I think that's all the time we have today. Uh, thank you, Anthony, for being our guest today. And if you have any <laughs> skill or talent you'd like to share, stop by room 136 for Student Insight. And uh, I'm your host, Jeffrey David Hall, Jr. Keep creating. <laughs> thank you. Gun. Why do you ask that, kiddo? Welcome back to Short Stack. I'm your host, Jonah Bowen. One man, one tractor, a green screen, and 10 minutes of comedy. What could this next segment be? We bring you now to none other than our first installment of Jeffy's Tractor Time. Hello everybody, I am uh, Jeffrey David Hall and I'd like to welcome you to the first installment of Jeffy's Tractor Time. Here on the tractor, I, I really want to get into the nitty gritty and the details of, of life and I, wanna, I want you to feel comfortable like you have someone you can trust and talk to. And today on the tractor of a good old red Ford, I'd like to talk about something most of us have and most of us love, siblings. So, so siblings, we, we all got them, right? Now there's like three main archetypes of siblings. We got like your older kids, like your oldest. Now they're usually like the worst ones. Uh, they're like the beta test. You know like when you pre-order a game, you get like pre-order for early access. This is where you like test the ground and dip your foot in the pool to see if it's like nice to get in. And usually you see this is why some people have one kid. They don't like it that much. But then you got the middle kid. Middle kid's usually pretty rad. Uh, I can't speak. I'm, Spoilers, I'm not the middle kid. Uh, but middle kids, they're usually pretty great and they, they have their stuff together. Now we got, okay, let's come clean. I'm the baby in my family. Uh, babies, it's pretty great being the, being the youngest kid. You see, being the youngest kid, your parents know everything. 
and uh, they know how to raise you right. Uh, and they do it fantastic. Like, all the kinks are worked out. This is the final product. This, is, this isn't, you see, this isn't Destiny 1. This is Destiny 2. Both the Destinies are garbage. Also, the thing about being a baby is your other siblings at this point have most likely driven your parents crazy. And it's not that they don't care about you anymore. They still love you and care about you. They just don't care what you do, man. You see, my mom, she's done with me. She like, uh, she says hi, and she asks me how my day was, but she, she lets me do what I want for the most part. She doesn't care. Uh, she said I can't have a TV in my room. I came home with like a 55 inch TV one day, and she looked at me and, and just uh, looked the other direction. It was fun, but babies, it's easy being a baby. Everyone hates the baby sibling. Uh, and because everyone hates the baby sibling, it, it leads to uh, some, some pretty horrible things. When I was a child, uh, I used to love popcorn. Not that I don't love popcorn anymore. Popcorn's fantastic. Uh, movie theater popcorn, you can't eat a movie without watching popcorn. Uh, so eating popcorn, me, watching Scooby-Doo and the Cyber Chase. Best Scooby-Doo movie ever. I'm watching Scooby-Doo Cyber Chase, and I have to use the bathroom, you know, like a child. And so I get up and I use the bathroom. And you know how uh, in certain kinds of dog food, in dog food, uh, you got like the big pieces and the little pieces. They took my popcorn and they put the little pieces inside like the little openings in the popcorn. And I come back from the bathroom and I sit down on my, on my big grandpa recliner chair watching Scooby-Doo. And because I actually do like to eat popcorn, I take a whole handful and I, and I eat the popcorn and the taste of dog food just squishes into my mouth and it's disgusting. It literally is disgusting and I puke. In my family, mother and dad excluded, my, my brothers and sister, they laugh. They laugh a lot. It was pretty horrible. And, but that doesn't even compare to the worst sibling story I have. I know I'm going to get to loving siblings in a second, but I got to rant about these guys because like, I love them or hate them. They do some horrible things sometimes. My brother got grounded, my oldest brother, Willis, and he wasn't allowed to play video games. And Willis is a gamer. He was yet to rise up at this point. Uh, but he was a gamer, and you know like that meme, uh, you, like you at nighttime playing your DS, like hiding it under your bed? D this was this city stream. My mom said no DS, no video games at all for like the whole summer. I was like five at the time. And uh, my brother, uh, his father, he went to go hang out with his father for the summer, and he bought a DS in Virginia, and he hit it. And uh, one day when he came back, I saw the DS. And you know, another thing about babies, they like to snitch. Snitches get stitches. Uh, and this is what happened. Uh, I would run to my mom and say, Mommy, Mommy, Willis has a DS. My mom would come storming, up, storming upstairs, and there wouldn't be a DS. And I looked like an actual clown. I was clowning for that entire summer. My family thought I was crazy. Uh, they call me mean names like Big Head. They call me Crazy Kid. It wasn't nice. And every time I tried to find this DS, I couldn't find it. And actually, I got grounded one time for being such a tattletale. And then the worst part is, uh, actually, this is the best part. Uh, I was hanging out with my brother. Finally, I had forgotten about the DS thing. I let it go. He was done being grounded. He just finished being grounded. And uh, I was jumping on my brother's bed. And little does he know, uh, he was hiding his DS. In a, in a ceiling light. But DS falls out of the ceiling and he looks at me and I look at him. I'm like six now. I take the DS and I run to my mom and I say, Mom, look at this. I found it in Willis's room. He's had it. I told you it was real. It was like Candace from Phineas and Ferb. Like I finally busted my brother and uh, he hated me for a while and he just finished getting grounded. He got grounded again. Was it worth it? Um, yeah, it really was. It was a, a great moment of triumph. I love telling the story. Looking back, yeah, I was a snitch. I was a, I was a horrible baby brother. I was not allowed in my brother's room. They would always kick me out. I had to tell my mommy that I wasn't allowed in so I could get in access. It's not like I didn't have VIP access. I actually had that right stripped for me. They used to neglect my sister, like no girls allowed in the cool video game room with my brothers. They, they swapped it around because I was a little tattletale. But I just, I got a black mom, I just tell her, I'm in there. Uh, so, 
But siblings, like, while, while you might argue with them, like, you have a lot of good moments with them. Uh, a lot of the things I love today are because of my siblings. Like, we like a lot of the same music. I used to, and I used to love watching the, the Super, Super Mario, Mario Brothers, Brothers Super, Super Show, Show with my brothers, with Captain Lou Albano. Uh, I don't know any of the other actors on that show, but Captain Lou Albano, the wrestler, was Mario. And it was hilarious. I loved watching that show with my brothers. They introduced me to all the icons I love today, like Tim Allen with Home, Home Improvement. We used to watch Home Improvement, and Tim Allen would go, <laughs> and it was really funny. Uh, and I just loved hanging out with my brothers. Like, and it's really sad now, because like, I'm, I'm low-key an only child now. My sister's in Germany. My brother's back with his kid. All right, and my brother's home too. So I'm not really an only child, but they're really busy all the time. So like, they don't get to talk to me, so it gets lonely. And it's just like, they don't have time to hang out with little old Jeffy anymore. Little baby Jeffy has no one to hang out with. But here's the moral of the story. It seems like there's no moral. There's a big moral. Love your brothers and sisters before they go to Germany and have kids and don't have time to hang out with you anymore because you're gonna miss it. Also, don't be a little tattletale, because that will, like, that will come back to bite you in the end. Like, you want to play on your brother's epic gamer PC? It's not going to happen, because you snitched on him when you were six, and you, like, got his DS taken away, and got him grounded until he, like, graduated. And then even after that, you got his Xbox taken away. So, I mean, just don't tattle. So, thank you for joining me today on Jeffy's Tractor Time. If you have anything you'd like to talk about, you can come find me. Like, like, comment, and subscribe on a WVTV channel. Leave some comments on this video, and maybe I can get back to you. Read some of the comments, and I can give you some advice. Maybe you can even tell me what you'd like the next episode to be about. I really like talking about my siblings because they're a really integral part of my life. Uh, so I just want to tell you, uh, keep on tracting. This has been Jeffy's Tractor Time. And prevent forest fires. Also, you can leave a comment on what you think the next Jeffy's Tractor Time should be about. Well, that's all the time we have for today. If you like today's edition of Short Stack, be sure to check us out on the WV Television YouTube channel with videos just like this and even more. For Short Stack, I'm Jonah Bowen. We'll see you next time. Seatbelt? Uh, no. Kim, you know that people not wearing a seatbelt are 30 times more likely to be ejected from the vehicle. Airbags are useless unless you're wearing your seatbelt. Okay. Okay, guys, I'll wear my seatbelt from now on. For more information on seatbelt and car safety, visit www.safercar.gov. Home fire drills give your family a plan of action. Show everyone two ways out of the house, pick a safe meeting spot, and get there in under two minutes. Then practice so everyone knows exactly what to do. Go to ready.gov slash fire drill and learn how to prepare your family.